Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you our latest issue, a spring vase with blooming lilacs. Lilacs are such a wonderful flower, definitely one of my favorites. Here in the Pacific Northwest, they bloom in May, close to Mother's Day, so they make the perfect gift for mom or for myself. Lilacs are very thirsty flowers and they've got woody stems. So when you bring them in, you want to clean off anything that's damaged or broken. But don't take off the leaves. You want to leave those on there. Then down at the bottom, just give it a break. Really jarring that up. So I've torn that. You can even go back and do a little bit of whittling to show more of that raw wood underneath. Then many times they can be dirty. So I'll take a towel and just kind of wipe them down and then set them into a bucket to drink. So it's not just a knife cut. With these, you really want to break them. Get a jagged edge, maybe whittle, then wipe them down and then set them to drink. Now in this bucket, fresh water mixed with flower food. And I even put a little splash of bleach in there to keep the water clean a little longer. If you want more information about the care and handling more in depth, Go to our video library. There's a whole segment just on lilac care and handling. Then if you love lilacs as much as I do, we have a wonderful DVD, full-length movie of nothing but lilac design. But letting them drink like this with the flower food, splash of bleach, about two hours, and we're ready to design. Arranging with them is easy. Having a vase with the flower food, splash of bleach in this as well. But lilacs always make me think of the garden, so I wanted something a more garden look rather than just a simple vase. So I'm going to a large clay pot. Now obviously this isn't watertight, but it holds my vase just perfectly, sliding it right down in. Planned that, didn't I? Now I can go ahead and just add my lilacs in. They've been drinking. I can go back and whittle a little bit, but since they're freshly broken, if they're the right length, I can just set them right in. Got two different colors here, the deep purple and the lavender. Both of them, oh, so fragrant, absolutely fabulous. And I'm just feeding them in to a central binding point, letting the stems cross from one side of the vase over to the other making sure they're down into the water well so that they'll drink. They're such a thirsty bloom. I don't want them to dry out. This one's a little bit long. There we go. Sliding it in. And going back with more of the deep purple, getting some color contrast. And then radiating from front to back so that it fills in the entire vessel. A vase of nothing but lilacs is fabulous. But enhancing it with foliage, three different kinds, Leanne's rule, just makes it even more fabulous. Maybe a bit of ruscus, giving it a cut, and then dropping it in in that same radial format. Maybe even some large aspidistra leaves. They'll give it a nice contrast in scale. But to sh make them a little drapier, I just run my knife along the back side. I'm using the back side of the knife, not the sharp side, and the back side of the leaf. Then give it a cut. You know, it drapes a little more. It'll help it come over the edge of the pot. Give me a little more character to it. Repeat that. And then for my third foliage, some lily grass. And again, letting that drape as well, running it just along the back side of your knife, then lining them up in your hands so that they all curl the same direction giving them a fresh cut and letting them drop down in, radiating. And then repeat that with more so you get a little bit of each foliage all the way around, filling in. Then you can always go back and add a few more lilacs as well. Viburnum, or snowballs, they bloom at the same time as the lilacs. And their chartreuse green, so wonderful with the lavender. I like to mix the two. They also have a very woody stem that just needs to be broken or whittled. 
depending on how green it is. But you want to get that bare wood showing and then drop it in. And it just makes the purple come to life with that contrast to the vibrant green. Again, just whittling a bit and drop it down into place. Barked wire from the Oasis Company is a wonderful way to finish this off with a little bit of detail, still reminiscent of the garden. I'm just pulling off a segment and cutting it. And then taking the back end and placing it directly into the vase. So I've got one end of the wire directly in. Then loop it around like you're making a wreath just around the pot a few times. Then place it and loop it back into the vase again. Then you can repeat that if you want a little bit more so that it's fuller. I like to do it in multiple pieces so you don't have to worry about trying to pull it around the vase so many times. So again, just taking the end, setting it in the vase in the back. It'll just hold it into place, then looping around. And then when you get to the back again, sticking it back into the vase. And pulling it taut. Adjusting, making sure I don't have any leaves caught in there. There we go. Then locking it. Then I took just an old ugly leaf that I had. It was just some leftover silk foliage. But if you look closely, it's supposed to be a philodendron, but it looks like the leaves of a lilac. So I'm going to just cut a few of them off. I don't want the whole branch. I just want some individual leaves. Then using a hot melt glue gun, just a bit of glue right on the base, and then down to the barked wire. Hold it till it sets. And repeat that. A little bit of glue. Maybe putting the two together. And then filling them in, not all over, just a few leaves here and there. Getting it to stay put. Got glue on my finger. There we go. Little strings. Be coming around towards the front, down at the bottom. Then to finish and add a little bit of summertime. Little butterflies, just again cutting the wire off, pulling the label. A little bit of glue. Then let them fly like they're coming right up to see what the lilacs have to share and smell that wonderful fragrance. Lilacs in a vase like this can last three days to six or seven days. It varies greatly based on the variety of lilac. Most important though is that a vase like this has a limited amount of water and this is a lot of lilac stems and they drink quite a bit of water. So you're going to want to refill this vase every other day or so with more fresh water mixed with flower food. Otherwise, one day they may drink it all down to where they start to fade just because they're thirsty. For more creative inspiration and more fun with lilacs, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions, thoughts, you wonder what I was thinking about this, that, or the other thing, don't hesitate to contact us. You can reach us through the website or pick up the telephone and give us a call at 1-800-819-8089. If it's easier to use email, maybe we're on different time zones, maybe you're in a different part of the world, feel free to use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. For now, happy lilac time. Have fun and do something you love.